hills, thrills and spills. Two weeks of white hot competition at the 2006 Winter Olympics on snow, on ice and in the air. We have news of some world-class performances from Ireland skiers and sliders. And we look forward four years to Vancouver in 2010, when the Irish team could include some real contenders. Yes, hello and welcome to this special edition of OB Sport, coming to you from the mountains above Turin. Over the past two weeks, 2,500 athletes from 75 countries have gone for gold in 15 winter sports. Now, alpine skiing, of course, forms the blue ribboned core of any winter games, and Turin produced some thrilling downhill contests. And that's where we begin, because Ireland had two skiers, Kirsty McGarry from Dublin and Kerry Mantos Foley competing in three slalom events. Our reporter, Nilo Flynn, followed their progress. The slope you're looking at is Cissé's in the mountains of Sestriere, a long, winding sheet of white ice that the Italians have been preparing for two years. At the top, it's 2,500 metres. The vertical drop is 450 metres. There are 54 gates to test the athletes. It is, quite simply, the fiercest giant slalom course in Winter Olympic history. Eighty-two men started the men's giant slalom on Cissé's. By the end of the first run, 35 of them were gone, beaten by the icy conditions and the treacherous, turny course. Even World Cup champion Bodie Miller, the maverick American with the all-or-nothing style, found the going tough. A very, very bad mistake in the first days for Bodie Miller. By the time that Ireland's Toss Foley wearing bib number 70 took to the start gate, more than 25 skiers had crashed out. The Irish fans held their breath. Now from Ireland, Thomas Foley from Ireland. Thomas Foley is, of course, 7 seconds point 68 slower than the best time and the second intermediate time for the Irish guy. Set the 26 years old from Kenmare in County Kerry, Toss Foley started skiing as a child on a family holiday. The cheers rang round the stadium, an excellent time, 128-28, 35th place for Toss Foley. Congratulations, Thomas. Thanks for being with us. Toss Foley, congratulations, you survived. Uh, yeah, the course was pretty tough in the giant slalom today. How tough? What was wrong with this course that so many people didn't finish? It is seriously icy. You know, a lot of the guys were coming down and they looked a bit ragged. Even some of the best World Cup skiers. Watching guys now on the big screen crashing all over the place as well. Uh, I wasn't worried about crashing initially and I wanted to just ski fast. But I guess when you see so many guys come out, it's always in the back of your mind and you maybe hold back that bit more. But I can only hope for a, a better second run now that I've got the chance and uh, a good finish. From a start field of 82 competitors, only 48 finished. That's an attrition rate that I've rarely seen. And why was that? What do you think it was? Well, the conditions are very difficult. It's very, very icy. Uh, the course is quite a difficult set and there are a lot of rollers which are intimidating to a lot of races and they have changes of directions over many of those rollers. To round two, Francois Burke of Canada leading the pack. Foley in 35th place. With almost half the field gone, only the very best and bravest skiers remained and it was no surprise that the lead changed hands on almost a dozen occasions. First into first was Alexander Heath of South Africa. Alexander, good run. Nice to say you led a Winter Olympics. Uh, no, for me, uh, after, after my position in the first run, I didn't want to risk too much. I wanted to get to the finish, have my moment of fame. <laughs> in the demanding conditions, Bodie Miller made a heroic effort, thrilling the crowd by storming into the lead from 12th place. Race favourite Herman Meyer then bettered that time. And so did France's Joël Chenal. But the gold medal went to Benjamin Reich of Austria, whose time of 2 minutes, 35.0 seconds, was just enough to win the contest.
the medals decided, Toss Foley was skiing for pride and personal satisfaction. Before the Games, he declared that a top 40 finish would be an excellent result. Now, that was very much within his reach. 1.29.14, less than a second slower than run one. He moved up into a final position of 31st place, a remarkable result in a race where no less than 41 of the starters couldn't finish or were disqualified. I just missed out in the top 30, but 31 is just as good. So, yeah, I'm absolutely thrilled with you got to try and find the right balance and get in between attacking and staying in the course. As an Olympic final, it was a terrific competition. Yeah, just being at the start with the likes of uh, Reich and Miller and Meyer, it's uh, pretty, pretty intense and it's great to be there with the start with these guys. Well done, Toss! <laughs> you have made a lot of sacrifices to let Toss be here. Just tell us about them, please. It's been it's been really tough, but uh, I mean today has just made it so worthwhile. I'm so proud of him, and uh, even though it's most nerve-wracking day of all my life, it's just yeah, it's amazing. It's made it all worthwhile. And Liam, apparently, I got a text from my sister saying that he was cheering in front of the TV at his daddy. <laughs> so he's going to be the proudest little boy ever. <laughs> Ireland's other ski racer, Kirsty McGarry, was qualified to compete in three races, but chose to concentrate on her best two, the slalom and giant slalom, the more technical events. In the ladies slalom, weather conditions were terrible and visibility poor, making the start with its fast, tight turns very difficult. Down the course, a different challenge. The gate's so turny and set so far apart that racers have to ski right across the course, losing speed and momentum. In snow so heavy that course workers were repainting the blue boundary lines as the skiers passed, Kirsty finished in 42nd place. Down the field certainly, but the best Olympic point score of any Irish Alpine ski racer ever, based on being just 13.39 seconds behind the gold medalist Anja Persson of Sweden. <laughs> Two days later, Kirsty was back on the mountain, this time in the ladies' giant slalom. Again, conditions on the Collie Piste in Sestriere were exacting, with heavy snow falling, poor visibility and the racing line deteriorating with every skier that passed. Anja Persson was again favoured for the gold, but Julia Mancuso of the USA had other ideas. Living on her edges and taking an aggressive line, Mancuso secured the first gold medal for an American woman since 1998. Perfect timing for a skier who had never before led a major event. Skiing after the winner is never easy, but Kirsty McGarry also had to contend with a heavy cold and an injured hand. She cut herself badly while preparing her own skis. To add to her woes, she had also to be seen by on-course medics after damaging her hip with a freak ricochet from a gate during run one. Skiing through the pain, her 32nd place was all the more memorable. She completed the course in 2.22.87, again less than 14 seconds behind the winner. were pretty tough on this run. I got to watch a couple of first girls going from inside and it looked pretty rough so I'm happy I got down anyway. Where did you think you picked up time there? Um, I made a mistake at the top so I think probably down the bottom somewhere it was a bit better than before. But you managed to pick up 10 places between the first and the second run. That's really really good. Yeah it's a pretty tough course and I like it more technical. Um, quite a few girls came out because it's pretty difficult as you can see in the conditions it's getting worse for every racer um, and I managed to you know get a bit further ahead than the girls that were behind me so I'm happy with that. 